Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to learn how to make this 3D printable wheel from start to finish. This is a fun beginner friendly project, especially if you want to learn how to create your own custom wheels. And if you want to start integrating TPU into your own personal projects or designs. Now for this project, I will be using TPU, but this is a fairly simple print that anyone can do. And it's fairly simple to design with infusion. So if you're ready to get started and ready to start incorporating TPU into your projects and create something cool in the process, what we're going to do now is open up Fusion 360 and jump right into it. Okay, so to get started with this design, the first thing we need to do here is to click on Create, New Components, then let's go ahead and name this component to Tire and press OK. From here, what we need to do is to create the wheel for our design. To do that, we can click on Create, Create Sketch, then selecting the front plane here. What we want to do is to create a center diameter circle, clicking on the icon on the left hand side then selecting the origin or the center, and then dragging this out to around 60 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and create one more by selecting center diameter circle. From the origin, dragging this out, I'm gonna set the second one to around 80 millimeters. From here, let's click on finish sketch. The next thing we wanna do here is to select this profile we just made, which is the outer one, pressing E on our keyboard, which brings up the extrude feature within Fusion, then selecting the direction to symmetric. What this allows us to do is it allows us to extend one arrow to the right-hand side while extending the opposite side in the same direction or in the same amount. To show you, you can go ahead and just move the arrow. And as you can see, both sides now have a dimension or depth of 10 millimeters on both sides. So if this side here from left from the center to the right is 10, from the uh, center to the left is also 10 millimeters as well. Once that's done, press OK. The next thing we need to do here is to add a fillet. Before we do that, let's go ahead and turn off the sketch we just made. If it's already turned off, then you can go ahead and skip this step. But to turn this off, you can click on your canvas menu or your browser menu on the left hand side, click on sketches, then turn off sketch one. Next, let's click on modify on the top left hand side, select fillet, then select the curves all around our design here. I'm gonna go ahead and fillet this in to around, let's just say, five millimeters. What you primarily want to avoid is making this look like a donut because anything after five or seven, that's where it starts to round in too much and it looks more like a donut than a wheel. Once you're happy with your design, press OK. From here, let's go ahead and press S on our keyboard, type in tangent plane. What I'm really looking for is this feature called tangent plane, and it looks like a cylinder with the plane attached to it. And what this allows us to do is to create a tangent plane on our design here. To do that, we can go ahead and select the face, which is basically the ring that wraps around the design, and then press OK. Now what we can do is that we can go ahead and import the image for this project. Now I went ahead and found this image on Google, so I'll go ahead and leave a link down below, but it's basically just an image of a tire tread. Um, and it doesn't matter which one you use, but we'll go ahead and set this up so we can sketch this out when we design this. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this into Fusion, then selecting the canvas, and then go ahead and reorienting this so that way it's right side up. And then scaling this down to let's just say around 0.5 millimeters. What I'm really looking for is that it meets right in the origin. So if the center of our design is right around here, I want to make sure it's right in the origin. Now, don't worry about all the uh, little markings or patterns that you see on this tread. I'll try to make this as simple as possible without having to worry about all these other features on this design. Now, what I really plan to sketch out is actually everything here within this middle. So if you would imagine, let's just say for reference, if I were to go ahead and start sketching, what I really want is everything in between this section here. Because all we really need is just one pattern. And once we have one pattern, we can go ahead and revolve this pattern around our design here. So going back in time, assuming that you've already added the image to your design and you have your tangent plane, let's go ahead and click on create sketch then select the plane. And then what we want to do is to best to, to the best of our ability, draw a two point rectangle from the outer edge and just dragging it so it matches up the entirety of your design here. So what I'm really looking for is that this rectangle kind of creates a boundary for me. And this boundary is important, especially when you're designing projects in your own personal designs, because uh, it gets really confusing with all these details that wrap around our, our product. But I, what I really want is that I want this pattern here, this Y pattern that we have that creates the tread for our tire. Now, obviously you can design this however you like, 
But for the sake of keeping things simple and kind of getting some good practice in, we'll go ahead and create a boundary that fits within this Y. So once I've created that boundary and I created that square, we can go ahead and use this square as a boundary for ourselves and as a reference so that way we know where to stop sketching. So what I'm gonna do now is press S on our keyboard, type in control point spline. And what I'm looking for is this feature called control point spline. Selecting that feature, I can go ahead and zoom right in. Then from the outer edge of where the silhouette or kind of like the hollow dark version of our Y ends, just kind of matching it up and just dragging it in and meeting it towards the center. Let's go ahead and repeat the pattern once again from the left all the way down our design and just bringing it down so that way it matches with our product there. Additionally, what I'm also gonna do is just finish this up by creating a line and just dragging this all the way up. Then what I'm also gonna do is to create a midpoint or placing a point right here in the midpoint and creating a line extending all the way up. So that way I can use this line to mirror everything that we did on the left-hand side. Pressing S, type in mirror, then selecting the silhouette or the sketched out version of the mirror effect feature within Fusion. Selecting the objects. The objects we're gonna select here is these lines here on the left-hand side. Not selecting the boundary box that we created and not selecting the middle. We'll go ahead and select the mirror line this time and then select the line in the middle. With that done, we can press okay. And now we have our sketch on the right-hand side without having to resketch it and while keeping everything symmetric. Once that's done, click on finish sketch. From here, what we wanna do is to turn off the uh, canvas since we'll no longer need it. And what we wanna do is to use this profile and to deboss it into our product. To do that, we can press S on our keyboard, type in emboss, then select the first option here. Make sure the effect type is set to deboss and select the sketch profile, which is the two sketches that we just designed here. From here, selecting the faces, which is gonna be the tire or the wheel for our design, and press OK. Now, if you're turn off sketch two, and you take a better look all around our design here, you can see now we have the deboss pattern in our product here. What I'm also gonna do is to add a small chamfer to this design. Now, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna add this anyway, because the way we're gonna print this is that it's gonna lay flat on its side here. So I want to avoid any sort of supports, especially around this middle section here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to add a chamfer to my design, pressing S, type in chamfer, then selecting the edges relevant to where I wanna chamfer. Now, the reason why I'm chamfering these edges here is because since our design is laying flat on its side, primarily here, you wanna make sure that you don't add any supports into this inner area. Now, it's not likely to add support, especially if you have the deboss set to uh, one millimeter, but just in case, just to avoid any sort of confusion with our slicer, I'm gonna just chamfer this in just slightly, kind of creating this uh, winged effect around it. We can also try to select these inner edges, hoping that Fusion will read it, but in case it doesn't, and there it goes. So now it loads up pretty nicely. So it didn't load those edges there, so maybe just the inner pieces there. And I actually might deselect those. And instead of using the same value, I'm gonna just create another selection set in the chamfer menu here, clicking on the plus icon, then selecting the edges once again, and let's see how far I can extend this. So 0.75 works for me. Press okay. Now with our pattern fully complete, let's go ahead and revolve this around our design. Pressing S, type in circular pattern, then selecting the last two features within our timeline, selecting the axis, and then selecting the edge or the ring that revolves around our design. Now, as you can see, now Fusion has populated this feature around our tire. We can go ahead and set the quantity to anywhere between, let's just say 18 to 20. And what I'm really looking for is that the edges here kind of match up and that way they're touching. And I wanna make sure to set the compute type to optimize. So that way Fusion will get rid of any parts or pieces that might be a defect on our design. Press OK, and assuming Fusion doesn't crash, and lets this load. Cool, so it worked out pretty well for our design. 
Not perfect, but we can probably play around with this pattern here to kind of give it a much more cleaner look. But so far, this actually looks pretty great. So if we were to go ahead and export this to our slicer, to do this, we can go ahead and click on bodies, then select body one, right click and click on save as mesh. And here we are within our slicer. So I'll go ahead and rotate this around so it lays flat. And if we were to 3D print this, here I have a generic TPU using for this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a lighter color here so that way you can kind of see what's going on. And now we have our simple tire fully designed from Fusion straight to our 3D printer. And this is a perfect design if you want to start incorporating TPU into your projects and, it's, and or especially if you're someone that's into building RC cars or any sort of tires or wheel accessories for any sort of automobile or anything like that. But this is a really fun and cool project. I had a lot of fun making this myself, especially since using TPU is kind of not common, especially for the everyday project. But feel free to print this in whatever filament you like. In addition, if you also want to add some sort of material to this, pressing A on your keyboard, you can also type in black within your Fusion 360 library here, and then using any sort of material that matches what you're trying to use. So I'm going to use plastic matte black. And now we have a fully 3D printable ready to go tire, or basically the outer tread for our tire designed within Fusion 360. If we were to render this, this is our design from start to finish. Now we could incorporate a rim into this and complete this, but for now we'll keep it simple as possible so that way you can start creating your own models just like this. So that pretty much wraps up today's tutorial. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section below. Additionally, if you want to get access to more tutorials and resources just like this, and or if you want to further your skill set, learning how to create functional designs, articulated designs, and as well as surround yourself with other people, also learning how to create their own models for 3D printing, and maybe even turn this into a business, make sure to check out the 14-day design challenge with link in the description. In this challenge, we basically go over exactly how to design your own models from 3D printing taking you step by step on how to design your own models even if you're a complete beginner don't have an expensive machine and don't want to spend the next weeks to months trying to figure all this stuff out so if you're interested in checking that out you can click the link in the description but with that said thank you so much for watching make sure to like subscribe down below and i'll see you guys in the next one take care